I truly, genuinely do think that people need to be focusing on getting adequate vitamin D in. Specifically, when you're talking about viruses, it's really, really important. And the evidence is just starting to point more and more clearly towards it every day. Look at, back in the 1800s, we knew that there was a link with sunlight and viral infections. Okay, we could see that patients that had tuberculosis or patients that had other diseases, they would just improve faster if they had more sunlight. Then as a result of that, we started seeing that B cells and T cells within the immune system had vitamin D receptors. And this is what you hear people talk about all the time, so I'll touch on it for a second. Our immune cells have vitamin D receptors. So that simply means that when our immune system gets activated, it picks up the phone and calls vitamin D. If vitamin D is not there, then the war never gets started against a pathogen. So basically the immune cells just kind of hang out and never do their job. That's the very basics of it, but I want to dive into what happens with a virus and how vitamin D is a lot more unique and a lot more powerful than we're led to believe. Okay, the British Journal of Medicine had published something that found that over 11,000 people through a 25 study uh, meta-analysis had less instance of an upper respiratory infection if they were taking a vitamin D supplement. Pretty solid proof when you look at a big meta-analysis with 25 studies like that. Anyhow, let's dive in to vitamin D and viruses so you know what to do and how to arm yourself. Uh, please do hit that red subscribe button and then there's a bell icon in the bottom corner of your screen as well. If you hit that bell icon, I'd ask that you please turn on notifications so you get a little push notification from YouTube whenever I post up a new video. And then after this video, please do check out Sun Warrior. They have a really cool pea protein that I utilize when I'm intermittent fasting or I utilize when I'm following a low carb ketogenic diet or anything like that. So I highly recommend you check them out. Special offer for anyone that is watching my channel, anyone that's a fan or a follower of my channel, you can take advantage of that link after you watch this video because it is going to help you out. So let's look at the flu because the flu is obviously a common virus. Now, the severity of the flu is not necessarily how much of the virus is inside you. It's more so how your body is responding to it. See, there's a direct correlation with the severity of the flu and the amount of cytokines or the amount of inflammation that comes as a result of it. It's actually a phenomenon called the cytokine storm. And what it is, is it's when a virus comes inside you, like influenza, it also infiltrates the immune cell itself. So it infiltrates the immune cell and it enters what's called the endoplasmic reticulum and it causes damage within the immune cell. This causes a dysregulation of the immune cell to produce a lot more cytokines, a lot more inflammation. So in essence, the influenza virus triggers your body to overreact. Well, there's a direct, again, correlation with more cytokine response and more fatality from influenza. So basically what's happening is you have so much inflammation that's occurring because your immune system's overreacting that it can literally damage tissue and of course go into secondary infections and cause all kinds of other issues. But where does vitamin D come in? Well, it turns out according to the Molecular and Cellular Endocrinology Journal that vitamin D allows macrophages to modulate their cytokine response much more. In human terms, what that means is it allows immune cells to control themselves a little bit more. So when exposed to a virus, they don't just go Bleh! and like all of a sudden just create this massive, massive inflammatory response. They control it a little bit more and hold it in so they don't cause as much damage. This is just one reason why vitamin D is very, very important. But let's move on to some other interesting stuff. So then we look at some science that shows that low levels of vitamin D are linked to immature macrophages in the marrow. Okay, that sounds exciting, but what does that really mean? It means that the actual white blood cells, the macrophages, the immune cells that you build inside your bone marrow never reach full maturation. They never fully grow up if you're deficient in vitamin D. Well, that's not that outstanding and that's not that cool to talk about until you realize what it does in the actual wage of a war, right? Those immune cells now lack the ability to release these antimicrobial particles or do whatever they're supposed to do, like hydrogen peroxide, okay? So they can't actually neutralize. So it's like they never went through adolescence and now they're kind of well, shooting without a loaded gun, if you know what I mean, okay? So they never are growing up. Well, that's a big problem. It turns out that vitamin D can actually help fix this. Vitamin D helps the expression of the antimicrobial compounds and properties. So basically, if you have vitamin D, then it enhances and makes sure that, of course, the macrophages grow to their full development, but also increases more hydrogen peroxide and makes them more potent. So they can do more with a little bit less. Okay, so who here likes Kool-Aid? All right, I have a point here. Autophagy. Okay, autophagy is cellular recycling and cleanup. I want you to imagine this. The influenza virus just came in your body. 
okay? And it just entered into a cell. Well, it doesn't just stealthily enter into a cell. No, it enters into a cell like the Kool-Aid man blasting through a wall. Okay, it triggers a bunch of collateral damage. Okay, so envision that. Envision this influenza virus just being like, yeah, here, okay, and then all of a sudden you've got this damage. Well, who's gonna clean that up? Well, it's the natural autophagy process, right? And we have to encourage that somehow. But typically, the only way that we encourage autophagy is through abstaining from food. But we know from some of my other videos that you really should actually provide yourself with glucose and food when you have the flu or when you have a virus. So the best way that you can induce autophagy at a localized level is once again, vitamin D. So now there's some studies that are showing that vitamin D induces a specific form of autophagy within immune cells, within macrophages. So that means the very specific damage that occurs when a virus enters into a cell and disrupts the folding of proteins and causes all this dysregulation, that can get cleaned up through specific, site-specific autophagy. So you have a very targeted janitorial crew that cleans up the mess that the war of the immune system wages. You really need to be using vitamin D. See you tomorrow.